Okay, we'll move on to the last talk of the session. Uh, we have Dr. Yongwei Ping, who's a senior consultant at the Department of Medical Oncology in NUH. Um, after his fellowship here, he was awarded the A-Star International Clinical Pharmacology Fellowship at the University of Chicago. And on returning to Singapore, he was awarded an investigatorship award under the Clinician Scientist Award uh, to further his research into personalized therapy. He leads the therapeutic arm of the Singapore Gastric Cancer Consortium, which received the prestigious five-year transfer Translational Clinical Research Grant in 2007. He is, his clinical interest is in gastrointestinal cancers and his research interests are in pharmacogenetics and epigenetics in cancer. I think uh, Dr. Yong Wei Ping is uh, logging in via Zoom because he's not feeling well, but uh, thank you for joining us, Wei Ping. And he's going to present to us on the updates uh, on systemic therapy for liver metastases. Um, thank you, Karamei, for a kind introduction. I just want to check uh, if you all could see my slides. Yes. Okay, great. So um, today I'm going to start off uh, focusing um, on sorry, colon uh, rectal. We can see uh, you. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but I can't see the slides yet. I can see you. Oh, okay. So well, maybe let me try again. Yeah. So can you just click on share screen on the computer? Okay. Mm. Oh yeah. Okay. Now if no, you can. Can you to, see it now? Yeah, okay, we can great. see it now. If we can go to presentation mode. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay, you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, so um, for the first part of my talk, um, I'll be focusing uh, on providing where we are now for stage four uh, colorectal cancer, particularly those with uh, liver only metastasis. Uh, thereafter, move on to what's new in the horizon. Okay, so um, over the last two decades, um, it is not difficult to appreciate that the outcome of patient with stage four colorectal cancer has improved uh, tremendously. So in 20 years ago, with single agent 5FU, we see uh, the medium overall survival uh, around one year. Uh, but just this year, um, two abstract that um, was uh, presented in ESCO suggest that even with a uh, doublet chemotherapy and anti egrf therapy, um, the medium uh, overall survival in this subset of patient is as high as 38 months. So for the first time, uh, we can uh, quite happily uh, announce that the medium OS for a patient with stage four colorectal cancer now is more than three years. Now the improvement uh, is not only uh, because of the availability of a uh, new treatment in the first line setting, uh, it is also because of the availability of new drugs uh, in the second and third line setting, such as uh, Lonserf, uh, Ramosirumab, uh, Regov, uh, Regorafenib, Afibacet, uh, that are available in the second or more line setting. Now, when we look at the natural history uh, of patients with unresectable liver metastasis, systemic review um, show us that the objective response to systemic chemotherapy correlated very well with the resection rate. Now, in study that did not have uh, resectability defined at the beginning, um, the resectability rate over the years has improved from about 7% to about 14%. Conversely, if, um, over the blue uh, color studies, you can see that in study that um, have the resectability defined at the onset, <coughs> the resectability rate improved from about 30% to about 60%. So again, telling us the importance of patient selection and that if we don't look uh, for patient for potential resectability in multidisciplinary treatment board, you may not find it. Now, the ESMO guideline has suggests a two approach in determining how to personalize systemic treatment in patients uh, with liver only metastasis. First of all, uh, if you look at the x-axis, the surgical criteria essentially define patient whether they are easy technically or difficult. So those patients that have difficult technically, um, then 
it is advisable to use uh, throw in the kitchen sink with the best chemotherapy to achieve the best response. Conversely, if the patient is technically easy, then you need to look at some of the oncological criteria which define by what are the prognosis of the patient. Uh, so um, parameters that we look at include the nodal status um, of the primary disease, the disease free interval, the number of lesions, size of the lesion, whether the tumor marker is elevated, and whether there's extra uh, hepatic uh, disease. Uh, and finally, uh, what is the biology of the disease? So for patients that have excellent oncological uh, or prognostic uh, feature, then perhaps no periop uh, therapy is needed. Conversely, those with good or perhaps bad, then you need to intensify the periop treatment. Uh, to illustrate with example, on the left-hand side um, is a patient that with single small uh, liver metastasis. So in that setting, uh, upfront surgery uh, is indicated. Conversely, those um, with multiple liver lesion technically challenging and favorable biology, then um, a systemic chemotherapy first approach with more intense treatment aiming for conversion is indicated. <coughs> okay, so um, the next question that we need to ask is that uh, how much chemo that we should give a patient? It is not uncommon to hear from our surgical colleague that we, they see blue liver or yellow liver. Uh, for example, patient with oxalic pattern, uh, given them multiple lines of treatment may lead to sinusoidal obstruction syndrome. Conversely, those with uh, other chemotherapies such as irinotecan may lead to um, uh, uh, um, steatoria, uh, sorry, um, steatohepatitis. Now, so um, study looking at the morbidity uh, with the cycle of treatment, it is not difficult to appreciate that if you give a patient six cycles or more, then you can see a dramatic increase of the surgical resection complication. So hence, currently the advice is to resect as soon as possible to minimize liver complication. But of course, this needs to take into the setting of the prognostic fate factor that may determine the duration of the chemotherapy. Now, moving on, looking at uh, what is ESMO guideline. The guideline for colorectal cancer was published first in 2016. Um, you can see that on the left-hand side, patient that with clearly resectable uh, metastasis, uh, surgery alone, uh, or surgery with periop chemotherapy uh, is reasonable. So th this are the, uh, represent the group that are technically uh, easy um, for resection. Conversely, if you look at the center part of the figure, those that require uh, cytoreduction, and in this subset of patient, the chemotherapy would really depend on the molecular subtype of the patient, uh, and hence uh, determine uh, what is the optimal chemotherapy. For example, those with brow swap type should receive chemotherapy at least a doublet with anti-GRR therapy. And those with mutant should receive combination chemotherapy with bevacizumab. And those with uh, BRA mutant, which harbor the worst prognosis, uh, currently triplets chemotherapy with bevacizumab is uh, recommended. Now, moving from 2016, um, there is increased knowledge as to what are the molecular uh, heterogeneity um, of colorectal cancer. In short, when we look at gene expression profile, we can divide uh, colorectal cancer into four different subtypes with CMS1 and CMS4 with the poorer prognosis. Uh, TP5 with the presence of BRAF uh, mutation is CMS1 and um, with increased uh, TGF beta activation and angiogenesis pathway um, activation in CMS4. Um, so when we look at the sidedness of the tumor, uh, we can also see that the left-sided tumor tends to harbor for uh, more CMS2 and CMS3, hence uh, with better prognosis. Whereas the right-sided tumor, on the other hand, uh, tends to have a higher proportion of CMS1 uh, and CMS4 hence uh, poorer prognosis. So looking at sidedness of the tumor in anti-EGFR therapy, currently there's uh, at least five different studies, uh, phase three trial that tell us that if uh, you are left-sided tumor and if, if you are uh, EGFR, uh, if you are the wild type, then you should use uh, anti-EGFR upfront. 
Conversely, uh, if you have a right-sided tumor, uh, even if um, you, you have a RAS, RAF wild type, and in this subset of the patient, uh, perhaps using um, bevacizumab together with chemotherapy uh, would be a more sensible approach. Now, moving forward um, to other actionable uh, uh, molecular subtype in colorectal cancer. Uh, there are currently at least five uh, subtypes that are potentially actionable. Uh, KRAS, just now we mentioned, uh, has been a known uh, resistant marker for NDGFR therapy. Uh, it is also one of the most common um, uh, mutations in colorectal cancer. Uh, apart from that, uh, BRAF, uh, B600 mutation, uh, uh, a little bit less common. Uh, and um, later we'll move on to what are the treatment available for this subtype. Uh, next, uh, MSI high subtype, also known as uh, proficient uh, uh, MMR subtype. Uh, this subtype uh, only present in about 5% of patients uh, with stage 4 disease. Uh, more uncommon would be an NTRAC1 uh, fusion translocation. And last but not least, uh, a B2 or the HER2 amplification subtype. So this is a newspaper uh, cutting uh, from our Straits Time uh, earlier uh, this year, uh, pulling the uh, publication uh, from the Morris Sloan Kettering Group uh, on the response of uh, colorectal cancer patient to immunotherapy. So, um, and moving on to what are the data up there for patients that uh, have this uh, subtype with uh, deficient MMR or MSI high. So the Keynote 177 study uh, randomized patients uh, with colorectal cancer to upfront pembrolizumab, which is an anti-PD-1 uh, antibody uh, versus the investigator choice of uh, standard of care chemotherapy uh, with or without a combination with bevacizumab or cetuximab. Um, uh, you, you can see on the right-hand side, the PFS uh, is significant. Uh, and on the bottom uh, right-hand side, the overall survivor, we can see that numerically uh, it is superior uh, in the pembrolizumab uh, arm versus the chemotherapy, even though that it did not reach statistically significance. However, given the clinically meaningful and uh, um, uh, improvement uh, of uh, PSF, uh, currently pembrolizumab has become uh, the standard of care. Um, overall, uh, response rate uh, again was impressive at 43.8% versus 33%, and the duration of response uh, has not been reached uh, at the time of uh, result presentation. Uh, finally, uh, the survivor, um, the safety profile um, for pembrolizumab is again superior to chemotherapy. Um, and Following up, uh, there's a checkmate uh, 142 study evaluating the role of dual uh, immunotherapy uh, blockage on PD-1 and CTLA-4. Uh, in the subset that received uh, nivolumab and ipilimumab, um, you can see here that the median PSF uh, is 73.6 months at two-year mark, and the OS again uh, more than 70% uh, in two-year marks. Very impressive. So uh, in the earlier setting, uh, and um, there's a niche study uh, that initially looked at a small number of patients with uh, DMMR uh, and also proficient MMR. Uh, what most impressive uh, is the group of 20 patients that have DMMR or the MSI high subtype. Uh, out of the 20 patients, um, uh, all of them achieve a pathological response of which uh, more than half, about 60%, uh, um, achieve pathological complete response. So um, again, this is very similar to uh, what we listened to uh, earlier on uh, by uh, Professor Queris uh, with our experience uh, in France with peritoneal disease, where majority of patients uh, did uh, have pathological response. Now, um, the study was updated um, just a few weeks ago in ESMO uh, with an uh, inclusion uh, of now 112 uh, DMMR patients receiving two dose of nivolumab and one dose of ipilimumab. So uh, in this study, the um, uh, aim is to look at the resection uh, um, uh, rate and whether there's any delay uh, in resection. Um, during the uh, following resection, uh, it is noted again over um, two-thirds of the patient 
achieve pathological complete response. And 98% of patients managed to underwent timely surgery with a medium time from first dose to surgery uh, of only 5.4 weeks. So the treatment is well tolerated with uh, only 4% of patients uh, receive severe immune related uh, adverse event and hence organ uh, sparing approach uh, with this uh, group of patients uh, is now uh, considered for future study. So um, going back to just now the, the article in Straits Time, um, so, and this is an, the, the study that lead to a lot of public interest uh, um, where looking at the early rectal cancer, uh, 12 patients with a deficient MMR received another NTPD1 uh, antibody uh, known as uh, dostalimab. And uh, here, unlike uh, the niche one and niche two study, where the treatment is only uh, given uh, over a uh, two cycle, here a uh, patient actually received six months of treatment. So with more treatment, uh, the whole cohort of 12 patients all actually attained 100% um, uh, uh, clinical response. None of these patients uh, underwent surgery uh, or radiation. So hence, uh, with this exciting uh, result, uh, it really path towards uh, answering the question whether we can now uh, organ preserve patient, uh, particularly if they have excellent response to immunotherapy. The challenge, however, uh, would really be how do we identify patients that still have residual disease left that would still need surgery on follow-up. Now, the situation for uh, those with proficient uh, MMR status is perhaps uh, less uh, uh, exciting than those with um, uh, MSI high tumor. Um, so in uh, here are some of the phase two trial demonstrating response rate with uh, single agent or dual uh, immunotherapy uh, range from 0% to only 5%. Uh, hence, the greatest challenge in this majority group of the colorectal cancer is to identify a subset of patients that are immune hot that may benefit from the combination of immunotherapy uh, and also chemotherapy. So, Checkmate 9x, uh, 9x8 uh, look at um, the combination of nivolumab and systemic chemotherapy. Uh, in this uh, study, it seems like uh, the CMS subset one and three uh, are the group that benefited most from the immunotherapy. Uh, and for as uh, a TISO uh, tribe study, where it, uh, it looked at patients uh, on Forfiri, uh, Forfoxiri plus Bezizumab uh, together with the addition of a TISO lizumab. And this study uh, again identified subset of patients uh, uh, with immune score positive uh, that have uh, a high infiltration of CD3, CD8 positive cell are the one that seems to benefit most for this combination approach. Now, moving away uh, from immunotherapy uh, to uh, now uh, BRAF mutant colorectal cancer. So in BRAF uh, positive mutant cancer, the combination of uh, BRAF inhibition and anti-GFR inhibition has been looked at uh, in Beacon study, where it evaluate patient on the second line setting, uh, comparing standard of care uh, cetuximab, which is an anti-EGFR therapy together with chemotherapy, versus the combination of ankyrophenib with cetuximab. Uh, uh, the, the study is a positive one. Um, so on, on the right hand side, you can see that ankyrophenib plus cetuximab uh, does improve uh, dramatically the overall survival. Uh, however, uh, with the addition of uh, bimitumab, uh, as you can see on the left hand side, although does improve overall survival, but uh, does have uh, 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 increased overall toxicity and hence uh, the addition of MIG inhibitor uh, has, has uh, not been approved. Uh, and hence the encarofenic acetuximab res represent the new standard of care in second line setting for patients with B600E BRAF mutation. Uh, moving next to a uh, RAS mutated colorectal cancer. Uh, although we mentioned earlier on uh, RAS uh, mutated colorectal cancer is common uh, in more than 44% of patients with stage four cancer, but there's a subset of KRAS mutation known as KRAS uh, uh, exon G12C mutation. Uh, there are currently um, several drugs uh, um, that has been developed uh, to block this uh, uh, mutant protein. So currently, um, KRAS G12C 
only present in about 4% of all uh, colorectal cancer. Elibrasib um, is a new drug that's a small molecule that are covalently bound to the cystine residue uh, to this KRAS uh, mutant uh, and hence inactivated. Uh, as a single agent uh, in the CRISPR-1 trial, the response rate is impressive at 22%. And the response rate uh, is even much higher when you combine it with systemic chemotherapy. Um, and moving on to a HER2 amplified tumor, uh, several um, anti-HER2 approach uh, has previously uh, been de described, um, but uh, the mountainous study uh, just been uh, reported uh, this year. So um, hence, I thought I'll, I'll just uh, provide an update here. So in this study, uh, it looked at the combination of tucatinib and trezuzumab. Uh, tucatinib is a small molecule targeting um, HER2, and uh, trezuzumab is an antibody targeting HER2. Um, the combination strategy uh, in patients that uh, have uh, uh, heavily pretreated uh, is nearly 40%, uh, and the PSF uh, is fairly impressive at 8.2 months. Similarly, overall survival reached 24.1 uh, months, uh, fairly impressive in this group of heavily pretreated patients. And um, finally, um, NTRAC1 fusion, uh, although it's fairly rare, currently there's two drugs that has been approved, uh, they are larotractinib and entractinib. Uh, in the study that led to uh, the approval uh, of larotractinib and entractinib, it did include a small proportion of colorectal cancer patients. And as you can see, uh, the response here is around 50%. So um, my final part of the talk, uh, even though the title of today's talk is on systemic chemotherapy, I thought um, we, we, uh, it's still fair to talk about regional chemotherapy. So the option of hepatic uh, artery infusion chemotherapy uh, uh, has been around for quite some time. There's a randomized trial that demonstrated marginal improvement in survival compared to uh, systemic chemotherapy. Uh, but however, the main criticism of uh, the study was that it was performed uh, in the era where um, but, um, where the uh, targeted therapy are, are not used, and, and hence whether um, the, uh, 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 the study is still relevant in the current setting. So to answer that, uh, recently there is a retrospective uh, study uh, uh, comparing uh, systemic chemotherapy with or without a hepatic artery infusion by Francis called showing a, an improve in overall survival. So the, the, the arm that received uh, addition H AI, uh, medium survival is 67 uh, months versus 47 months with a 20 uh, months improvement in survival. Uh, however, uh, this still need to be validated prospectively. So in conclusion, um, I hope that I share with you that systemic chemotherapy for colorectal cancer is a cornerstone uh, of the treatment. Uh, and also that R0 resection uh, in patient with a uh, 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 Colorectal cancer liver only metastasis uh, has changed the natural history of metastatic colorectal cancer. However, the timing and the selection of the most appropriate treatment should be personalized, uh, particularly uh, after uh, MTB review. And finally, uh, availability of newer molecular targeted therapy and immunotherapy um, would probably change uh, the future algorithm uh, for patients with cancer with liver only metastasis. Thank you very much for your attention. There's no. Is there any question from the floor? Is there, is there any on the? Can you hear me? Yep. Wei Ping? Wei Ping, can you hear? Yep. Okay, fantastic. That was yes. a great, that was a great. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great review, uh, a tour de force review of, uh, of all the available uh, options, including most recently from ESMO. How do you propose that the field uses the four now well-recognized um, molecular determinants of colorectal cancer to guide 
therapy. You presented a slide that showed us there may be differential responses in groups one versus three, versus two versus four. Um, but outside of the BRAF mutated tumors, what's the path forward? Thank you. Okay, um, so, so maybe if I um, uh, like to rephrase the question, uh, please correct me if I, I didn't get it correctly. The uh, question here is that, um, uh, is it for prime time uh, to use the uh, gene expression profile um, to guide treatment? Um, so, so, so maybe um, the, in, in short, the answer is uh, not yet. Um, reason because currently uh, the main uh, uh, guidance in, as to for precision um, systemic treatment is still pre pretty much dependent on individual uh, gene mutation. So um, in the frontline setting, um, KRAS, BRAF uh, are negative predictor of anti-EGFR and, and hence uh, uh, it is a must uh, for us to check it routinely. Uh, at the same time, um, the MMR status and the MSI status, um, again, uh, there's a study to suggest uh, non-inferior to chemotherapy, better PSF and respond rate and, and hence uh, uh, it, it is also uh, a standard of care. Now, um, other uh, actionable mutation uh, that I alluded to, like the um, HER2 amplification uh, and NTRAC uh, and the KRAS uh, G12C, um, all this unfortunately uh, are, are not approved uh, in the frontline setting. So, so hence in the frontline setting, um, it, it's still probably uh, too early. Uh, now, with regards to the question about gene expression, um, uh, earlier on I mentioned that there are some suggestion that um, the, the CMS1 and CMS3 um, may be able to help to select patient uh, for uh, immunotherapy with chemotherapy, uh, but that is an early um, result and signal and, and still yet to be validated. So currently, um, I have to say that the gene expression profile probably not ready for prime time, uh, but moving forward, um, we, we do need um, a prospective study uh, uh, to validate uh, this, the role of this uh, biomarker. Thank you. And so what's your practice here? Let's say, from what I'm hearing from you, the vast majority of patients will, uh, with the colorectal liver met, receive perhaps uh, full FOX. So let's say the patient's getting full FOX. How many months do you give before the patient goes to the operating room? Is that standardized or is this something that's discussed on a case-by-case -case basis at MDT? Uh, um, uh, um, so so we, we follow the uh, ESMO guideline uh, in terms of dividing them into uh, technically whether this one is a challenging or non-challenging uh, subtype. For the Let's focus on the non-challenging subtype, um, uh, which is a, a lot easier. So, so those that uh, non-challenging subtype, which means that upfront resectable, uh, and that um, the, the biology is good, um, we usually use the form criteria. Uh, and in such scenario, um, we actually offer upfront uh, resection. Uh, however, for those um, with the form criteria suggest that the biology is not so good, uh, typically we expose the patient uh, to uh, some systemic chemotherapy, usually uh, for FOX, uh, like, like what you mentioned. Uh, and typically we'll go for surgery um, after about two months um, uh, or, or, max, uh, not, or not more than three months, uh, because uh, this is the subset that we will need to uh, reduce the morbidity from uh, additional uh, systemic chemotherapy. Conversely, uh, if someone that the biology is really not so great, um, just to give an example, if the person um, has a potentially resectable lung metastasis and also potentially resectable uh, liver metastasis, even though that they are technically resectable, but the biology we know is uh, less straightforward. And if let's say uh, this person has a history of previous resection and relapse, about um, uh, six months ago. And, and, and in such scenario, I, I would be more keen to give more chemotherapy to test the biology. So, so, so hence a lot of time, um, such scenario uh, would be discussed in the tumor board and, uh, and we'll formulate the plan uh, based on the technical uh, factors and also the biological prognostic factor. 
Okay. So in the isolated metastasis that either get zero chemotherapy or get the two to three months of chemotherapy and then go to the operating room, are they getting adjuvant chemotherapy? I didn't uh, see that we had reviewed the Japanese trial data, but uh, are you giving any adjuvant chemo in those settings? Thank you. Uh, so, so, so for, for those that with very good prognosis, uh, we, we do not routinely uh, offer adjuvant uh, chemotherapy, uh, but those that um, uh, inform criteria fulfill uh, the risks, uh, uh, high risk of relapse, then in such a scenario, we typically offer uh, altogether six months of uh, systemic therapy, including the, the pre-op chemotherapy. Okay, um, I think if there are no further questions, in the interest of time, we'll end this uh, session. Thank you to all the speakers for the great talks. Thanks. Thank you.